Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at everything you need to know about mastering audio by seeing where mastering fits into the audio production process. Step one, you've written some music or a song or a number of songs that you're going to release as either a single, an EP or a full length album. Step two, you record and produce the music at either home, in a project or a professional studio. Step three, you mix down all the tracks into a stereo file or you pay a mix engineer to do that for you. Step four is where mastering comes into the whole process. Put simply, mastering is taking your collection or body of work that you've spent so long creating and it applies a series of processes and standards to that body of work to prepare it for release. Mastering really is all about preparing and enhancing your music for the release format or platform of your choice. How are you going to release your music? Are you going to go old school and release it on vinyl, CD? What about iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, digital download, YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud? There's so many different formats for you to consider. Many of these platforms have their own audio level requirements. That means if your track's too loud, they'll squash it down to the level that's suitable for their own platform. And that means you need to master it, keeping all of this in mind. Let's stop for a minute and talk about the whole point of recording music. We're recording music for people to listen to, right? Well, how do you want people to describe your music? Pumping, punchy, huge, warm, shiny, silky, lush, loud, bright, piercing, dynamic, harsh, dull, flat, boring. Well, one of the key aims in the mastering process is to remove the negative qualities and manipulate your track so the listener is going to respond with a positive description of the track. Mastering isn't just about the sound of your music. You want a listener to stay interested as they listen through your EP and your album. So one of the biggest considerations that you'll have to settle on during the mastering process is to look at the collection of recorded tracks. How do they fit together as a body of work? How are you going to get the listener to sit through your whole EP or album? And which track order is going to have maximum impact? With dedicated mastering software, all of your tracks go into a track list so you can move them around instantly on the fly. You can also do things like fade in and out in between different songs. But there's absolutely no point in having the track list right if your levels are all over the place or one of your tracks sounds brighter or harsher or on another track your bass is way boomier. One of the fundamental reasons for mastering is to uniform the sound so all of your tracks sound right when they're played together from start to finish. Of course, you can hear changes with your ears, but good mastering software will have a number of visual tools which instantly analyze a track and they'll compare tracks so that we can see where tracks are different and then we know where to make the changes. Looking at mastering software is similar to looking at the dashboard of a plane. There are real-time tools and metering to show you exactly what your music is doing inside this big sonic picture that we're painting. You can use these tools and metering to help enhance your mixes. That might come in the form of making a track louder or softer, adding saturation and warmth, adding width to an area where the electric guitars are so they sound wider, controlling every frequency inside the mix so we can tighten up or fatten up the low end. We can add clarity to the frequencies where the vocals are most prominent, or we can add air to the high end of the track. One other really cool thing about mastering with software these days is all of these changes that I've just discussed can be applied over different parts or sections of your track. You can even give your chorus a bit more impact by speeding it up just that little bit. We can apply multi-band plugins to select parts of your track. These plugins give us frequency bands that we can move around to ensure we're hitting the frequency areas that we want to adjust. You can even get in and draw a section that you want to apply a plug into and make changes that way. We can almost jump right into the middle of this stereo imaging by using mid-side functionality. Think drums and bass, and they're usually in the middle. And on the outside, which is the side, you'll often find synths and reverbs and atmospheric stuff. Being able to direct between the two means you can narrow down something that doesn't sound right and make changes to improve it. Another really important part of the mastering process is referencing the music you're mastering. 
You can find other music which is similar in nature to the music you're mastering and quickly compare your track to their track. Now, good mastering software will allow you to do this instantly and it will also have analytical tools that show you the difference between your track and your reference tracks. And you can even copy various aspects of your reference track and apply it to your own. Another part of the mastering process is removing any errors that may not have been picked up in the mix stage. So they could be a click or a microphone stand hit. You can use dedicated mastering software to automatically search for these errors and repair them instantly. Let's say your music sounds great and you're really happy with the overall sound. Well, here's the most important part of the mastering process, making sure you can make money out of your music. There's a number of different regulatory codes that you can embed into your music to ensure that every time your music is played, the royalties come back to you or to ensure that the music is related to you or a client that you're working for. It's important to have mastering software that will easily embed this into the data of the music that you're mastering. Finally, if you're doing an audio CD master, then it's really important that you include a DDP, which is a disc description protocol, in the data that you provide to the CD manufacturer. A DDP contains really important information like how long is the gap in between songs or whether there's a crossfade in between two particular tracks. It also contains important information like the name of your album and the title of all of your tracks. Standalone DDP creation software is expensive, so it's important to ensure that it's all included as part of your overall mastering software package. Throughout the course of this video series, we're going to go through everything you need to get you on your way to mastering your very own music and in the process, saving yourself some dollars and getting your music out into the world as quick as possible. Please like our video if you've learned something, subscribe to the WaveLab YouTube channel for plenty more videos like this and stick around for plenty more videos on how to master your own music.